How are y'all doing this morning? Isn't God good today? Good every day? I am excited uh, about this series. How many enjoyed this series so far? Now today what I'm going to, I need your help, is uh, we've got, because we put a little more extra in the service, um, we've only got a few minutes, right? So I'm going to have to go through some of my notes quickly. So I'm going to have to talk a little faster. Can y'all handle all that? All right, so I'm going to try to go through some things. Many stuff was that you know. I really, I really want to get to a point today, and uh, that that the question I want to answer is this: uh, the Bible says that those that are led by the Spirit are, when we're children of God, we should be led by the Spirit. That if we're led by the Spirit, we don't operate in the flesh, is what it says, or have do do dumb stuff. You got with me on this? And so, how do we, like, how do we walk in the Spirit, or how do we get led by the Spirit? How do we know God's speaking to us? Is anybody with me on this? I know I talk about this many times today. I'm going to go in a little more depth about that. And I'm going to talk about how the Holy Spirit was given from God. Man, He's with us all the time. And so let me give you a few scriptures to catch up. Are y'all good? Look at your neighbor and say, wake up in Jesus' name. All right, here we go. So so when we talk about the the presence of the Holy Spirit, remember the first mention of it, the Holy Spirit is mentioned 800 times in the Word of the Spirit of God. And the first time it's mentioned in Genesis 1-2 says, Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. That the Spirit was there, right? And so what we learn from this, these, uh, the terms in the Old Testament, the Hebrew word was this. It was ruach. And it means wind breath, a violent uh, exhalation, or a blast of breath. It was just a, a breathing, right? That's what we learn. In the, uh, in the New Testament, the Greek word is pneuma. And pneuma is a current of air, blast of breath, a strong breeze or spirit. So when the word spirit comes up many times, uh, we know we love God because how many can we can relate to having a father or not having a good one, right? We love the son because we can get a picture of Jesus, you know, we saw the chosen, he's there, right? There's a picture of him in most churches, if not our church, but a lot of churches. How many ever went to that church where they had that picture of Jesus? Blue-eyed, white Jesus. How many knows he was Jewish, right? And so, so, so we, we can get Jews, but when you say spirit or Holy Spirit, we're like, hey, that's kind of, you know, that's kind of out there. And so you, maybe you haven't been introduced to it, but the Holy Spirit is the third part of the Godhead. And just as much as we should honor the Father and honor the Son, he's in that same category as God himself. And in the Old Testament, this is how he would work. He would come on people and at one at a time and he would ascend on them and he would leave them. And so like, if you look at the judges, or Samson, the Spirit of God would come on Samson, and he would do this great feat, then he would do some dumb stuff, right? And the Spirit would go, man, I ain't hanging out with Samson no more, right? And so he came on Saul. Saul, the first king, said he was anointed, so he came on Saul. And when he came on Saul, and then Saul did good, and then Saul disobeyed, and he was pulled from that. In fact, then, then he was placed on David, because only the Holy Spirit would just kind of move on individuals at a time in the Old Testament, not everybody at once, but individuals at a time. And so he came in David's life when he was anointed with oil. In the Old Testament, if you study it, it really points toward the new. And when they would anoint with oil, like a king or a priest or whoever it was, they would, that was actually a symbolic of the Holy Spirit coming on them so they could do the work that God had given them. So like David had the anointing oil pour, poured on him. And this is what David uh, said one time when he had sinned. In Psalms, he said, God, please don't take your Holy Spirit from me. So this means this, that it's not, it's not an it, it's a person, right? And so when we, we started talking about all this, now in John 16, 7, when we flash to the New Testament, Jesus introduces a new doctrine. He introduces a change. In fact, we understand this, that when he died on the cross, he died for everybody's sins, right? And he, was, he died, but then he said, I'm going to empower you. While we are so blessed, church, you've got to get this, we are so, if you've been saved, you've got the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. And you've got a, guide, a, a person to guide you on the inside. And I'll show you these scriptures. In the Old Testament, they necessarily didn't have that. And so Jesus says this. He goes, but in fact, it is best for you that I go away. Because if I don't, the advocate. Now, I, I shared that word last week. And I used a, 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 a double root word. But it's parakletos. And I'll, I'll give you that definition in a minute. But it means somebody to walk beside you and make you strong. A counselor, a comforter. It's been translated many different ways. Uh, but it comes from the same word, paraclete. And it says, if uh, uh, I got to go away, if I do not go away, uh, then I, well, excuse me, if I do go away, then I will send him to you. He said, guys, I've been protecting you because the anointing is on me. 
the Spirit of God is on me. It ascended on him as the form of a dove, right? He, when he, the first message he preached in Luke, he said, the anointing is on me, or God has anointed me too, and he names all the stuff to do, right? He says, but listen, guys, if I stay with you, I can only really reach this area because I, you know, my spirit is what's guiding you, my authority. He says, but what he was saying, if I go to heaven, then God promised to send the Holy Spirit to everybody. Isn't that awesome? Meaning that now the same spirit that operates in me, how I do things on this planet, God's going to give you that same spirit to operate the way I operate. That's so good. Right? And so here's, so you go down a little bit further in that scripture and he goes, and I will ask the Father, and this is him talking about it, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He's the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. Notice what he said there. What's the Holy Spirit do? He leads in truth. So on the inside of you, if you're a believer, you got the presence of God, and it will lead you into all truth. Now, now we're going to talk about how does he lead us, and I'm going to give you some ideas. But so he leads us, right? How many knows that? You want to know what your purpose is? Talk to the Spirit. You want to know what your next step is? Talk to the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit, depending on how classy you are. Right? I'm from the country. It's the Holy Ghost, all right? And so... It says, the world cannot receive him. Oh, wait, that's awesome. It's good and bad, right? We want the world to receive him, but they can't until they go through Jesus. Does that make sense? So he says, the world can't receive him because it's, it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. So they don't even know what to look for. In fact, how many knows if you bring up the Holy Spirit, people that don't know Christ think you're crazy? Come on, somebody. Right? They, they make fun of it on news and places like that when people believe in this, this kind of stuff. And he says, but you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. Notice he's giving him a contrast. He hadn't gone to the cross yet and said, he's with you now because the anointing's on me and I've commissioned you. But there's going to come a day when that changes and you have it. Now here's the word that I told you about, for those of you that love taking notes. I know this is kind of teachy today. It says an, uh, a parakletos, it's an intercessor, consoler, advocate, counselor, comforter, or helper. And now the th term I'm going to go with today, how many knows an advocate is somebody that pleads your case in court? Somebody that pleads the case for you, right? And so the advocate is there to take care of us, to keep us out of the hands of the enemy. He'll plead us, our case before the Lord, so to speak, right? Jesus is actually doing that, but he, he directs us so Jesus can do that. Now, when we talk about this, let me give you three things the Spirit will do. It's in the notes. I can't elaborate on this. But number one, He will convict you. How many knows He'll convict you? It says, And when the Spirit comes, He will convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. And that's the overall picture saying, Hey, you need righteousness and you need to get rid of sin. And on an individual basis, I can't stay here long, but how many knows the Lord will tell you when something's wrong? How many knows that's a good thing? Right? How many the, the Lord will say, No, 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 don't go that direction. That the Holy Spirit will be a guardrail for you if you learn to listen to Him. Now, what I want to encourage you to do is to be led by the Spirit means you have to, be, you have to know Him personally. This, this is kind of weird, but a lot of us, we've been taught to know Jesus personally and God personally, but we haven't been taught to know the Holy Spirit personally. Right? Many times during the day, I'll say, come on, Holy Spirit, what are we doing today? I'll just be talking to myself or talking out loud when I'm by myself, not at Walmart. You know what I mean? I might. The Holy Spirit... <laughs> Which one of these is not going to make my blood sugar go up? That's what I say at Walmart. And so he will convict you. And so what he does is he, he speaks to you. Now, here's how you learn that. You've got to start learning that voice. If, uh, if, uh, if you want to know something about me, guess who the best person is to ask? Me, right? But you don't ask somebody else. I'm not going to ask personal information or intimate information for somebody's spouse about their other, uh, another person, right? Because th that's not the relationship. Does that make sense? And so what happens is many times we want a pastor or a priest, right? And it's good to have counselors or a good church member or grandma or whoever else. And we ask them, and there's a good way to bounce off of that. But many times we need to ask the Lord ourselves, right? And talk to him directly. Here's the second one. The Holy Spirit will comfort you. We talked a little bit about that uh, last week, but he comforts you. And he says, I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter. Uh, verse with a different uh, version that he may abide with you forever now what does that mean it means comfort means to to walk beside you and help you what we prayed about today that's the comforter that's been dealing with you i dealt with that issue for years and you've heard me say that 
right? The comforter will deal with issues, and, 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 the, he, and actually, he loves you. Y'all with me on this? Did you know the Lord will lead you through love more than he will lead you through fear? I had this conversation this morning when I first started pastoring. I would, uh, can I just say it? I just preached the hell out of people. That ain't cussing. I was literally trying to, and I would be mean. You better change this, this, this. If you change that, 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 and I'd just give them the list, right? And then, you know what I learned? Is after they just did it because they were scared of going to hell, the, a month or two later, I'd have to preach the same thing again. Right? Because they wasn't saved because they loved Jesus. They were saved because they were running from hell. Right? And so whatever gets you there has got to keep you there. Come on. And so I changed that. You know what? It's the love of God that draws men to, uh, to Him, right? To, to salvation. And here's the third one I want to I say on a little bit is counsel. Now, He will counsel you. How many when you come to an area, maybe you're here right now, that there's a big decision in your life and you, you really want to make the right decision. As a daily basis, there's thousands of decisions we make every day that we don't pay attention to. But some of those big decisions, how many, is ever, how many can be there? Right? Uh, I, I'm kind of there with the church. We're kind of stuck in a dilemma that we've grown so much. So we're at this teeter-totter stage where we can only grow by about 50 to 60 more people on average for both services before we have to figure out a new plan because of limitations. And God hadn't opened the door yet. Y'all with me on this? So we're going to share that at our leadership meeting. So counsel you. Now, here's, here's the scripture. But when he, the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of his own. He will speak only what he hears. And he will tell you what is yet to come. Now, this is so important. You've got a counselor on the inside of you that will guide you to the place you need to be, the truth. But he won't speak about himself. He'll only speak to you what the Father, because the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are in complete agreement. He'll only speak to you what the Father has proclaimed what the word is proclaimed, right? And he says, then he will tell you what is yet to come. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? Did you know this, that you can get into a place where you're walking with God, and many of you have done this, where you have a feeling, a prompting about something that's about to happen, and it's as though God is preparing you to prepare your heart before it ever happens. Right? So anybody ever been there? I've, I've been there where God spoke to me about certain things, and I thought, no, 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 no. But, but he was speaking to me because he didn't want me to be surprised, right? So here's three ways that God counsels, directs your life. Now, I kind of sped through that because I only had a few minutes. I'm going to take my time just for a minute. We're still going to be out at the same time, or the kids' ministry will kill me, right? Thank God for them. So here's three ways. Number one way. Okay, let me give you three ways. Three, excuse me, three ways. The number one way God speaks to us is through the Word. Now, I'm going to read you a story, and I may just skip over it on the third point, but it's in Acts chapter 8. And there was a guy named Philip who was in the early church, and God was using him. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to him to go uh, in a certain direction, and he was going this direction. He, he was, uh, came near to a chariot. Now, i got to go read it to give you more impact. He comes near to a chariot, and when he gets near the, uh, close to this, he sees a chariot from afar off, and the Lord speaks to him. An angel told him to go this way. And then the Lord speaks to him, it says. The Spirit spoke to him. And it said, go over and stand by the chariot. So he walks over and he stands by the chariot. And he stands by the chariot. He hears there's a eunuch on there who's over the treasury of the Ethiopian queen. And he is reading out of Isaiah, the Old Testament book of Isaiah. But he don't understand it. And he says, do you understand what you're reading? And the guy says, how can I? I need somebody to teach me. Philip climbs up in the chariot. He, te he begins to teach about Jesus out of Isaiah because it speaks about him and talks about Jesus being the Messiah. The, the man gets saved. Then he gets baptized. And then he goes back to Ethiopia. Philip just gets off the chariot. And later on, now here's the end of that story, was that the main, one of the main um, denominations of churches in Ethiopia, the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, I think, it takes its links all the way back because when Philip got back, he preached the gospel. He was in a place of power with the queen, and churches blew up in Africa. Isn't that pretty awesome? But it started with this. It started with God, the Holy Spirit, speaking to Philip and going, Hey, just go stand by the chariot. Now, if it was me, I would want him to say, Hey, there's a dude up there that's very important. I want to start a church in Ethiopia, and you've got to go up there and win him to Christ. Wouldn't that be great? And say these words, right? But he didn't. He didn't. He just walked up. 
and he walked up, and as he, as he, walked, he just began to walk with the Lord before he had to get confirmation. Now, let me give you a side nugget. When God speaks to you, he doesn't tell you everything. He's just expecting obedience. Most people would have never started walking. Because we'd, we'd been waiting. Is that really God? Does God want to do that? Every time God speaks to you, there's going to be a risk, and it's going to require something of you. Come on, it's called faith, right? So it's not easy, but you got to step out. It's faith, right? When, when Tracy got baptized today, and which was beautiful, she, she's, you know, she didn't want to be in front of everybody, but she did that because God spoke to her. Come on, somebody. right? And so, so the first part is God speaks through the Word. Now let me give you this. This is important. The primary way God speaks, everybody say the Word. The word. If I don't get past this point, this is good enough today. But it says, for the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Now, let, let me say this. In Jeremiah, the Bible says, the heart is wicked above all things. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Your heart will fall in love with something regardless of what God says. Come on, and you will lift that booger up. We all do. Me too. We'll lift that thing up so high. Come on, that it's, it's above God, right? And we fall in love with it so much that we begin to believe that is God. Right? Now we have, people ask me questions all the time. They say, Pastor, you know, what, what about this? And, and, and you can clearly see it. How many of those, the hardest part is relationships. When I have singles and even when my kids were dating and, and all that kind of stuff, when I hear that stuff, because they will fall in love with the person that ain't lined up with Scripture. But then they'll say, come on, y'all help me out. But we'll say, but you know what? God's going to change him. God gave, why would God give me a love in my heart like this for him? Why would God do that? Right? And the, the truth is, God didn't give you that love for him in the heart. Right? Our hearts tend to do what they want to do. We've got to direct them, right? And so what happens is, is we fall in love with a job or a situation or a circumstance. And because we want it so bad, right? We, we mess up. And this is what it says. It says the Word of God is quick, uh, alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. Now, this is the Word. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. In other words, the Word pierces through all that and says this is right and this is wrong. Come on, somebody. It, it, the Word pierces right through. So if the Lord speaks to you today to go punch somebody in the mouth, it wasn't the Lord. I know your heart wants to. We've all been there, right? Rex was about ready to tear church up this morning. If he was in the huddle, he was mad, right? Not our church. He was, he's frustrated about some of us. So you follow me. So the Word separates it. Church, if we don't know the Word, you might as well forget getting a prompting from the Lord. We're asking the Spirit to speak where the Word already has. We say, God, tell me what's about in this situation. God says, I did. It's in the Word. You ain't got to ask. You ain't, it's in the Word. And so, he, so follow me here. In the church today, we get, we've got a little anemic in the fact that we don't know the word, but we want to be spiritual. And the most dangerous place people can be, and they can call themselves Christians, and where they get very spiritual, but have no word base. Boy, I'm preaching good in the prison, right? So you've got to get the word. Now, now here's what, what, what I love is he approached him, and the guy was in the word. Now, Here's another. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? So a lawyer said, hey, how can I get saved or how do I know I'm going to heaven? And Jesus said two things, two questions. What is written in the law and how do you read it? Did you hear that? He said, what's written? He said, but even the second step, this is where we mess up sometimes. What's written, but how do you interpret it? Because you can read what's written and still believe a lie. Right? That's why you need to look at what I'm preaching, follow up, and make sure I'm teaching you what the Word says. Right? And because I don't want to deceive you at all. But I've, I've been around people that they live in deception. There are church doctrines that people live by that are not gospel. And so it's destroying more people than it's helping. And there's a lot of people that are very religious, and they would rather protect their doctrine than preach love to, of Christ to people. They would rather excommunicate you and you clean yourself up and you get it all together before you come into the house. Right? Oh, I'm preaching good. And so, so he says, you got to know, but you got to interpret it. 
Now, here's what the Holy Spirit does. He guides you in truth. This is what I do before I read my Bible. I'll sit down and, and before I read it, I'll say, I'll say, Holy Spirit, open my eyes to see new things. Ho- open my eyes to understand it. I promise you, and the majority of people, many of you guys are sharp, but a majority of people in church have never read through even the New Testament. You read through it, pray in that prayer slowly, and see if God won't begin to speak to your heart. You'll have question after question. It'll be beautiful, right? And here's, here, let me give you this example. Do, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, and who correctly handles the word of truth. Does that make sense? In other words, Paul said, if you're a believer, he said, let me give you the, the groundwork, you better properly handle the word. Come on, somebody. Right? And so, so the word is the deciding factor between my heart. It's the filter that I should look at questions and decisions. Right? It's the filter that of everything in my life, of the, of the direct question. Now, there's many things, how many of there's many things the Bible does not speak to, right? They doesn't speak to, if, if they fall under the criteria, the Bible says if they're not a believer, you shouldn't even be dating them, singles. All right, if they're not a believer, it didn't say Christian, it said believer. Believer means they got a level of faith going on. Well, that's good stuff. And so, right? And so, the, the, so we know that. But just say somebody is a believer, then how do you know you should marry them? How do you know what job you should take? All right? How do you know what career to go into? We're going to talk about purpose in a month or two. Well, let me give you the second step. Second step is this. After the word is this, is that God speaks through people. So the, the, here's the unit. He was looking at the word. And so that was his first the word. But then Philip walks up and says, hey, man, and starts talking to him. And Philip was sent to preach the word to him. Isn't that pretty cool? How many of those God will send people to you uh, when in, uh, in your daily life to bless you with the word or direction? Right? Um, now to each one, this is, this is in 1 Corinthians about the, about the Spirit, it says, now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. Now I'm not, I'm not preaching on all these exhaustive, but there are nine supernatural gifts of the Holy Spirit that he does. Isn't that awesome? Jesus operated in all these. Or Jesus operated in most of these, right? Um, it says, Now to each one, manifestation, manifestation is given. To one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. Now it goes on through this. So what does that mean? A word of wisdom or a word of knowledge means this. When somebody can speak into your situation and they give you insight that's on time. Right? How many of those God does that? God will use almost anybody to give you wisdom, by the way. Come on, somebody. I preach this all the time. Be careful uh, the, the people you allow in your life or don't listen to. And be careful the ones you uh, excommunicate. Because many times, God will use your prejudice against people to bring a word to you. And if you are living in an area where you shouldn't be, that word can't get to you. Come on, somebody. For years, I was, I was taught a certain doctrine that I loved and believed in and a certain style, and I still do. But because of that doctrine, I, I, I blocked out every other pastor that was not of this denominational idea or this, this line. And so I didn't listen to him to a, a pastor of mine, a mentor of mine, rebuke me and said, do this sermon series. And it was by a person that I didn't like because I disagreed with one thing in their doctrine. And I, I remember God had to change me. I didn't even know I was that religious. And when I, when I studied this stuff, I learned more from this person than I could ever imagine, right? And so it took a man giving me some wisdom or some knowledge. But when we get to the supernatural wisdom and knowledge, that's when somebody gives almost a prophetic utterance, right? Now, let me give you what a prophetic word is. I don't know if it's clear. Is it, it didn't click up on my thing. Oh, here it is. It's divinely inspired, biblically-based messages that offer guidance, encouragement, or insight into specific, specific situations or future events. You start getting close to the Holy Spirit, you get yourself in alignment, guess what happens? God will speak to you. Some of what we were talking about this morning, God was moving in that situation. Does that make sense? And there's a boldness that God will give you to do that. Y'all with me on this? I'm going to tell you guys, I love church, love people, love the church as a whole, pastors, but I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit is what fired me up about ministry, everything in my life. When I realized that God can speak into your future, that he can guide you today, that he can take care of you, man, it blew me away. So here's you got, you got to understand, God will use people many times to 
to give you counsel. Don't let everybody in. But God will have people at times speak to you. Let me say this about preaching. Have you ever been in, in, in a service and somebody's preaching and you go, oh, that's right, that's for me. You ever been there? Oh, he's talking to me. I can't tell you how many people would come up after service and go, man, do you have webcams in my house? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I do. And so, uh, but they'll say, and, and I'll go, okay, well, you know, and so what, what they're saying is, is it wasn't me, it was the word when it went forth, they got hold of it and God had, a, had them at a certain time for a certain situation to get a certain word. Come on, somebody. God will speak to you through many things. And here's the last one. Is this all right today? Yeah. All right, the last one is through promptings. Now, I'm going to tell some stories. And I know this is a little deeper message that, that we normally do on Sunday. But I remember I promised you all about a month ago I was going to go deeper. And so we're still checking it out. Come on, somebody. So we need to keep bringing people. I'll try not to scare them. How about that? Okay, through promptings. Now, here's what a prompting is. A spiritual prompting is a divinely inspired, biblically-based nudges intuitive hunches, inner impressions, or inaudible messages that guide believers toward thoughts, actions, or decisions that are aligned with the will of God. It's pretty awesome, isn't it? And so that's what, a, that's what a prompting is. Now let me go past my, my act scripture that I kind of hit you with. So here's, here's what I want to give to you. So when the Spirit, it said the Spirit led or prompted or pushed Philip in that direction. It wasn't an audible voice, Right? But he went to witness and God changed the world. Now in Acts 1 and 8 is this. I'm not going to read the scripture. I shouldn't have brought it up. Acts 1 and 8. It says you, when you get the Holy Spirit. It says you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is on you. Right? When it says this. You can look it up. Acts 1 and 8. You shall receive power or dunamis. Continual power. Dunamis. After the Holy Spirit has come on you. And you shall be my witnesses. Right. Okay, let me say it again. He says in Acts 1-8, they were waiting for the Holy Ghost. We talked about praying for this, right? The filling of the Spirit last week. They were waiting for God to move on them. When that happened, man, it changed Peter from just a, a mouse to a man preaching to the same people. It gave him boldness, and he got up and preached Christ at this same Jesus that you crucified. Right? He, he preached it to him. And so, so what happens? The Holy Spirit comes on you. Here's the number one reason. Let me give it to you. He comes on you to be a... a it, you're endued with power. When the Holy Ghost comes on you, then he gives you... The ability to witness, to share the gospel. Church, can I say this? I love getting deep, but deep is winning somebody to Christ. The mission is to win people. The reason we get deep is to keep winning people, right? And so, so here, let me tell you this story um, real quick. Um, promptings are when God will speak to you or nudge you, right? Now, if you know the word first, and when God speaks to you, you better know you need people around you that you trust. Right? Because I have people all the time say, Pastor, I just feel God told me to do this. And I know, I know through experience the heart is wicked. And I go, I know you feel that. But are you, all your ducks in a row, have you really prayed about this? Because here's how I believe that God, uh, God operates. And let me say uh, that he speaks through peace, and I'll give you a scripture on it. But years ago, I got some of these I'm going to give out today. It was what Eric talked about for friend day. But I'm going to tell you a story. I first got saved, wasn't saved long, um, and, uh, had, and I was just helping the church, serving, and I was working construction, getting ready to go to college, and just reading the word like crazy. And so I made a list of people to get, my pastor was very evangelistic, so I made a list of people that I wanted to see get saved that I used to go to school with. And so I was pretty popular at, at that time because I would go out and hang out and have fun, and so we'd meet in the parking lot like kids do. But I could, at any time, I, there was hundreds of people that I could go out with. That just wanted, you know, because I was fun. Come on, somebody. <laughs> also stupid. Right? <laughs> and then going to hell. That was the three things. But I was fun. And so I, would, and so I remember I made a list because I had a bunch of people that were not saved. And I made a list of this guy's name. And I'm, his name was Mike. And so Mike and me played football together. And he had graduated the year after me. And he was going to college at, uh, un, uh, in, in Tuscaloosa at the University of Alabama. So he's going to to college, and so I've been praying for him, and we'd worked together on this construction area a few times. We worked building homes, or worked with contractors that were building homes, and I just did grunt work. And so I, the night before, it was a Tuesday night, I'm praying, so I got home, and I start, I'd just go through my list, and I'd pray for each person, God save him, God save him, God save him, right? And as I'm praying this prayer, um, the Lord spoke to me, and this is what he said to my heart, inside my heart, he said, 
I'm going to save Mike. And uh, I'm, I'm going to save Mike tomorrow is what he said. I said, that's awesome. I thought, well, he's going to school. He's probably going to go to church somewhere. You know, I'm thinking somebody's going to witness to him. So here I go to work the next day. I get to work. And when I do, they send me to a house to kind of finish it up, to clean, make sure everything's taken care of, all this stuff's out of it. And we had to check the attic in the basement. When I pull up, guess who's working with me that day? He just decided not to go back to school that day. Not forever, but just that day. He had something going on. As I walked up, I saw that, and I remember God spoke to me, and I actually called Melanie up and said, hey, I felt like God spoke this to me. It's just, uh, I want you to know, because I was trying to learn God's voice. So we both know that I'm dumb if it just so happened, right? So I walk by, and I look in the car, and guess what I see? I see a Bible open. Now, this is the guy who used to run around like me. You, you don't run around with a Bible in your car. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You had old body, bottles you were hiding from your mama. That's how you ran around. And so I walked in, and I walked in. We're the only two in the house. And so I'm like, oh, my goodness, and, and he, we were cordial. And I was working upstairs, and he was working downstairs, and the Lord spoke to me. He said, you go, uh, you go ask Mike uh, if he wants to get right with me, right? Now, this same Mike used to make fun of me after I got saved. They would pretend to lay hands on each other and roll around on the floor. Come on, somebody, because the church I went to, so they'd make fun of me. And I'm like, I ain't doing like, no. I'm like, God, you want me to go get embarrassed one more time? That's how I thought, right? And then I felt so convicted about it. I said, okay. And I stepped, I stepped, started going down the stairs. And, uh, and I said, and, you know, that's when God spoke to me about saying to get right. And so I walked to the bottom of the stairs, about two stairs up. He's in this big basement. He's got a broom or something. He's doing something. And I said, I said, Mike, do you want to get right with God? That's all I said. Just an awkward, open conversation. Just like the Lord told me. That's all I did. I wasn't doing any extra. I was thinking, he's going to make fun of me. Then I'm going to walk upstairs. And God's going to say, here's the lesson, son. You've got to be humble. Now, and, so, and so this is what he did. He burst out crying. He said, yeah, like he didn't know what to do. I don't know what was going on in his life. And so there we were. And I went. And I said, well, let's pray, man. And we, he had a piece, there was an old piece of card about to throw out. He knelt down that carpet. I led him in the Lord's Prayer. We prayed. He jumped up crying. I'm crying. We started hugging. I, he picked me up, and then it hit me. We're two heterosexual men, and somebody walks in and sees this picture. It's gonna, it's, as good as this day's been, it's going to ruin my day. Y'all know what I'm saying? God was still working on me. All right, and so I was just like, ah. and so, but he got saved. You know why? It was just a prompting. Now, I, I'm going to give you these, um, or if you want to pick one up, this thing that we're doing, the friend day stuff, it's just you put, your, uh, you put your name on it. There's stuff to win and all that, but I don't care about that right now but there's a place where you can go and invite somebody to Christ here's what I want you to do I want you to pray and see if God will speak to you if there's a friend in your life or a person you know that needs God to do something the Holy Spirit will do that if only five people hand these out and ask people we have five evangelists but if 250 people hand them out man we're going to reach a lot more folks so if you want one of these after service I got some here some in the back but I want you to do, I, I'm, I'm serious, I want you to pray. It was one of the most awesome things that God did in my life. Here's the, here's the second thing, can, uh, and I don't have much time. Let me give you two scriptures. Whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. That's what the Holy Spirit does. You'll go, and you get to a spot. What do I do? When it's a good decision, let me give you the second one. Second scripture. It's not clicking. Go to Colossians 3.15. Colossians says this, let the peace of God rule in your heart. Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart. Don't worry about it. Let me tell you. The Lord says stop. All right, here we go. You get to a point. What do you, how do you make a decision? It's the peace. You got a good decision. You got two good decisions. It's your peace. If you keep coming to a spot and keep going, ah, ah, and you have to keep going back and going, you sure? This is okay because sometimes everybody lines up with it. All your people line up. Are you sure? Then you know what you do? You back up and pray over. Y'all with me on this? There are decisions I had made that uh, were stories that, that I knew God was saying don't. But my heart wanted it so bad that I walked into it. I got into a business deal that was bad. It wasn't a sinful thing. Everybody around me said it was okay. And I, and I went to this business deal. And I knew I shouldn't. I knew it. And it really turned around and hurt me. God, now God delivered me and fixed it and all that. But, it, but I heard this statement. Um, it's easy for God to protect you when you allow him to direct you. 
And when we get upset with people, it's because when my kids, when I get upset with them, it's because I hear on the, they want me to deliver them, but they didn't want to listen to my counsel at the beginning. Come on, somebody, right? How much better would our life be if we listened to that counsel? I'm going I'm to uh, tell you this last thing. Um, I just feel led to do that. I don't know, I, I just feel a real prophetic anointing here today. Um, this week, to tell on myself, about, I think it was Wednesday, God had put on my heart about a month ago to call a person up that I had, we had a fractured relationship. It was, a, it was a, another pastor. Good guy, but there was a fractured relationship. And uh, I knew they had went through some stuff, and I thought, you know, I could help here. And so we just hadn't talked in a while. And, and uh, when God began to convict me, then I realized that, man, my heart's wrong because I'm not walking in love. And God convicted me. And I felt like God said, you need to go and humble yourself, you know, and make this right with this person. And I went, uh, all right, Lord, how many knows you put that at step number 10? That's on my task down here. I don't want to do this. And so it was Wednesday morning, and the Lord spoke to me. He said, call this person now. And I really didn't want to talk to him over the phone. I wanted to really speak to him face to face. How many knows you can you pick up more? You can, there's sincerity face to face where you can hide in text and calls. And when, uh, so I called him and we ended up having about a three hour conversation. I'm not going into detail because I didn't get his permission to share any of this stuff. And as we're talking and we got to a part and there was something that, that it was going on with him and I began to, God to put me, I'd already been through the situation and I began to minister to him. And I didn't even know, I didn't know what was going on. And this is what he told me. He said, cause I felt it, uh, I think twice. God said, I was studying. God said, call him. I said, no Lord, we study him for church. I mean, sometimes the Lord gets your priorities out of hand, right? And uh, I called him. And uh, it, by the end of the conversation, he said this. He said, he said, you think, you, he said, you think, you, you feel like you called me for this. He said, but this is why God had you call me was for this. Isn't that pretty awesome? And I remember sitting there going, I love that. I love God speaking. And, and, being, and let me tell you, church, if you want to get on fire, start talking and say, Holy Spirit, show me direct me speak to me amen and when he does man I'm way past my time one minute past my time let's do something real quick I'm going to pray over you let's bow our heads in fact before we pray I want you to do two things I want you to ask the Lord for somebody that he's wanting to minister to just ask put that name in your phone start praying over maybe a few people Let's see if the Holy Spirit will lead you to somebody that needs help. And then number two, I want you to ask God just to make himself real to you. Holy, just say, Holy Spirit, get real in my life. Introduce yourself. God, I thank you. I thank you for this congregation. I thank you for the people here today, God. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, we thank you. I pray, feel your people. Speak to your people guide your people, those that are making decisions. I pray today, Lord, by your presence that you'll direct their steps and direct their paths. Lord, hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you. God, those that need salvation, those that need encouragement, I pray God just put, put those names in our hearts right now. Direct us, God, in the relationships that you've given us, Lord. Hallelujah. Give us boldness. Give us favor to be your witness. And Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Lord. God, just speak to your church, speak to your people. Hallelujah. Stir up old visions and new dreams. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we worship you. And we thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You guys are awesome. We give the Lord a hand clap. Ain't God good? Um, I don't know who our prayer partners are. We do this every week. If you need prayer at the end of service, transition, you see somebody to, for healing or to agree with you, financial, kids, whatever, we'll have people up here you, that can pray with you. But also, if you, if you got a name, will you do me a favor? If you feel like God gave you a name, I ain't going to make you raise your hand because you don't want everybody to know. Would, would you grab one of these cards or something back there? And I'll have a handful up here. Will you grab one for that person? Because I'm praying over these every day. Amen? So hey, this, this be dismissed. Let's all stand up. You guys are awesome. Thank you for being here. Love on somebody on your way out. If you need prayer, come on up, man. Don't be shy. God is good.